The U.S. has deployed a dozen F-A-18 fighters to a military base in the Middle East. This move is part of the Pentagon's efforts to protect Israel from potential attacks by Iran and its affiliates, reports the Times of Israel. According to an American official, the F-A-18 aircraft and the E-2D Hawkeye reconnaissance plane departed from an aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Oman and arrived at an undisclosed base. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered the increased military presence in the region due to concerns about escalation in the Middle East following the recent killings of a senior Hezbollah commander in Lebanon and the Hamas political leader in Iran, likely as a result of Israeli strikes. Both groups are known to be supported by Iran. The U.S. Navy's deployment is expected to be temporary, with an F-22 fighter squadron en route from its home base in Alaska to the same base. Approximately a dozen F-22s are anticipated to arrive in the Middle East in the coming days. The Times of Israel reports that it is unclear how long all the aircraft will remain at the base together, with the duration likely depending on developments in the coming days. Earlier, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh told reporters Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will be directing multiple force movements to provide additional support to Israel and increase protection for U.S. troops in the region. The White House, in a statement, said President Joe Biden reaffirmed his commitment to Israel's security against all threats from Iran, including its proxy terrorist groups Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis. It's currently not clear what form an Iranian attack could take and whether it could be as significant as the April drone and missile attack, which was largely intercepted by Israel and its allies. The United States is doing everything possible to make sure that this situation does not boil over. White House Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer said in an interview with ABC, Part of what makes back-channel messages and conversations effective is that they need to stay private, Finer told ABC. So I won't speak to the details of the diplomatic activity that is underway other than to say in close coordination and conjunction with our Israeli allies and other partners and allies in the region. Since Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukraine has repeatedly struck Crimea, destroying or damaging about half of the Russian Navy's warships, including one submarine. As Business Insider writes, our country has used drones, naval drones and anti-ship missiles against the fleet and the Kirsch Bridge, often with devastating consequences. Ukraine's campaign has even forced Russian warships to leave Crimea for bases in the port cities of Feodosia on the far side of Crimea and Novorossiysk in Russia. This not only prevents the occupiers from using the peninsula as a key logistics route through southern Ukraine, but also spoils its appeal for Russian tourists. But, as the publication writes, if Ukraine hopes to reclaim Crimea, it will need a huge strike force because the battle for Crimea could become the heaviest battle of the bloody war. It will be extremely difficult to get Crimea back because Crimea is essentially an island, retired U.S. Marine Corps colonel and senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Mark Kansian, told the publication. A landing is impossible because Ukraine lacks ships to transport large numbers of troops and their heavy equipment. In addition, Russia still has long-range aircraft and submarines, which are essentially invulnerable at sea, the expert explained. Russia has extensive military infrastructure across Crimea that would need to be severely damaged for Ukraine to have any chance of taking it back, according to Basil Germond, an international security expert at Lancaster University in the UK. Military experts and analysts told Business Insider that Crimea is difficult to reach due to its location far from the front lines, Russia's heavily fortified defensive lines and Ukraine's lack of manpower and air power. Crimea is deep inside Russian-occupied territory and far from the current front lines, Kansian said. Russia has also heavily fortified its front line with anti-tank ditches, trench warfare, dragon's teeth and minefields with most of its defenses in northern Crimea. The Russians are heavily fortified and well defended in these areas and it will take time for the Ukrainians to break down those defenses said Mark Temnitsky, a non-resident fellow at the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Without the ability to transport large forces by air or sea, 
Ukraine will be forced to attack through Russian defensive lines to get closer to Crimea. Despite the battlefield difficulties Ukraine faces, some experts believe it can retake Crimea given enough weapons, troops and time. This would require crossing the Perekop Isthmus, separating Crimea from mainland Ukraine or the Sivash. However, to do this, Ukraine first needs to break through the Surovikin Line, a complex system of defensive fortifications and obstacles in the south and east, which Ukraine has never broken through. Founder of the German think tank European Resilience Initiative Center, the question now is when Ukraine will accumulate so much firepower, not just artillery but also aviation, that will be able to break through these defensive lines and then reach the operational space of Crimea. If Ukrainian soldiers do reach Crimea, Sumleni said they could destroy the Kirsch Bridge and the last ferry crossing over the Sea of Azov, cutting off Russian supply lines to the peninsula and isolating Russian forces. Sumleni added that Crimea has historically been vulnerable to attacks.